So last time in the Quran class, we studied these questions. Ms. Umu Ahmad. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What shall be done when husband and wife start thinking about divorce? According to Ayah 35 of Surah Nisa, one arbitrator from husband family and one arbitrator from fa wife family and the four person together sit for reconciliation. What does Ayah 38 tell us? If we spend on good things for show sure of, then we will receive disgraceful torment from Allah. Okay. So today we will study the Hadith class, inshallah, from the book Masnad Imam Ahmad. First student we have is uh, Ms. Hoor. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Read this hadith. It was narrated that Abbas Abis Abis bin Rabi said Rabia Rabia said I saw Umar go to the black stone and say by Allah I know that you are a stone and can, cannot cause harm or bring benefit were it not that I saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kiss you I would not have kissed you then he leant down and kissed it <clears throat> basically this hadith mean that black stone which is Hazir Aswad cannot benefit us cannot harm us we only kiss him because it is the sunnah of Prophet ﷺ. Whatever Prophet ﷺ did, whether we understand it or whether we don't understand it, we need to follow him in that. So whatever Prophet ﷺ do, we just try to do the same things. No matter we understand it or no matter we don't understand it. No need to write any questions from me. Just remember one thing. Whatever you uh, hear, read about Prophet Wasallam, try to do that in your life. Next student, Koser. Razina. Do you hear us? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Read this mm -hmm. one. Read this. Sujan Abdul Hushna, who was from Basra, said, I came to Madina and meet Aslam the freed slave of Umar bin al-Khattab. I said, tell me a report from Umar. He said, I cannot. I am afraid that I will add or separate something. If we said to Umar, tell us something from the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would say, I am afraid that I may add or subtract a letter in the messenger of Allah Wasallam said, whoever tells a lie about me will be in the hell. So this hadith is for those people who just uh, forward everything that they see on social media. On social media, there are many fake hadith. Prophet Wasallam never said those things, but these are attributed to Prophet Wasallam. So whenever you see anything, Without reference, just ignore it. Don't share it with anyone else. Don't forward it. So, what will happen 
okay no need to write anything just uh, listen and understand it what will happen if anyone tells a lie about prophet sorry yeah. 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 Okay, I think he was asking them questions. So, what? Um, so, if you share anything without reference and it is a lie, then basically you are telling a lie about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And whoever tells a lie about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that person will be in hell fire. So we don't need to write any question here. Next student, we have uh, Razina. Um, Muhammad. It was narrated that Umar said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever says in a marketplace, there is no God but Allah alone, with no partner or associate, is the dominion. To him all praise is due, all goodness is in his hand. He grants life and death and he has power over all things. Allah will record for him 1,000 one thousand thousand good deeds and will erase from him one thousand thousand bad deeds and will build a house from him in paradise okay so you all better know this thing actually when people go to the markets and business villages they just forget about the religion completely most of the people so that's why it has such a great level so whenever you go to market or shopping mall and other such space, try to say this thing. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu bi yadi l-khair yuhi wa yumitu wa huwa la kulli shayin kadeer. So then when you will read this in the market or shopping mall, Allah will record for you 1,000 good deeds and Allah will also erase 1000 bad deeds from your record and Allah will win the house for you in paradise. You can make a screenshot of this page um, because you need to memorize it. Again, we did not write any question here. We just, you just need to memorize this sentence completely. Next student, Hoor. Read this one. Umar, Umar bin al Khattab has said on the day of Khaybar. Khaybar. On the day of Khaybar, a group of the companions of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said so, and so is a. Martyr. 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 So and so is a martyr until they passed by a man and said, So and so is a martyr. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, No, I saw him being dragged to hell because of a clock yes that he stole from the body okay. go out and call out to the people no one will enter paradise except the believers so i went out and called out no one will enter paradise except the believers so this hadith basically tells you that you don't know the reality of any person Maybe you feel that a person is very good, but in reality, that person will go to hellfire. And sometimes it may happen that you may think a person is bad, but in reality, he is a very good person. So you don't know the reality of any person. Then no one will enter paradise except the believers. So to enter paradise, you must be a believer in Allah Almighty. So there were people who used to support Prophet 
and help Prophet but they never embrace Islam. Those people will go to hellfire. So to go to hell paradise, you must need to believe in Allah and His final and last Prophet Again, we don't need to read any questions from here. Next student, we have Koser. Read the three to nine. Koser, Razina. Um, Muhammad. It was narrated from Sa'ad bin Ubaidah from Ibn Umar that Umar said, No, by my father, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Stop it. Whoever swears by anything other than Allah has committed an act of shirk. Okay. Whoever swears by anything other than Allah has committed an act of shirk. Very important. Often Muslims also severe. So it is a duty for those. So first you need to write. Can we swear by anyone's name except Allah Almighty? Almighty. So the question is, can we swear by anyone's name except Allah Almighty? In the answer you will write, according to Hadith 329, according to Hadith 329, if we Swear by anyone's name other than Allah, then it will be considered as an act of shirk. I will repeat the answer according to these three to nine of Masnad Imam Ahmad. Anyone who severed by anyone's name except Allah, then it will be considered as an act of shirk. So this basically means that you can only swear on the name of Allah. You cannot use the name of your parents or your children, or anyone else. Miss Hu? Yes. Repeat the question and answer. Can we swear by anyone name except Allah and one? So what is the answer? No. No. Did not you write the answer? No. Do you have a notebook? No. That's why you forgot the answer. Without a notebook, you will forget everything and this class will not benefit you. Now read the next of these.
it was narrated from Nafi that that Omar Rizalatan ha added to to the mosque the area between the pillar and the enclosure and Usman added Usman Rizalatan added something to the mosque Omar said were it not for the fact uh, that I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say we we went to extend our mosque I would not have added <clears throat> anything to it so just like the hadith related to the Hajri Aswad same thing is here Sahaba never did anything Accept what they saw Prophet ﷺ or what they heard from Prophet ﷺ. So even in the expansion of the mosque, he said that he I would not have added anything to it. I rather that I heard the messenger of Allah ﷺ. So since the Prophet ﷺ said that he wanted to extend the mosque, that's why the Sahaba also did that extension otherwise they would not have even touched it so no need to add any question from this or this or we'll proceed to the next one oh sir read this one it was narrated from umar that he said allah may he be glorified and exalted then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did the truth and he sent down with him the book. One of the things that were revealed to him was the verses of stoning the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stoned adulterers and he stoned them after him. Then he said, we used to recite, do not forsake your real father and attribute yourself to someone else. For this is an act of kufr. If you do that, or it is an act of kufr to forsake your real father and attribute yourself to someone else, and the messenger of Allah said, Do not praise me as the son of Maryam was praised. Rather, I am his slave. So say his slave and his messenger. Perhaps Muhammad said, as the Christian praise the son of Maryam. So what does this hadith tell us? This hadith tells us that Islam is both Quran and Hadith. For example, some people criticize that this punishment is not in Quran. So why Muslims give this punishment? The answer is this is in the Hadith. The Prophet ﷺ gave this punishment to adulterers. So this means that Islam is in both Quran and Hadith. We cannot leave any of it. Whatever Prophet ﷺ did, that is also necessary for it. Second thing is for those people which just forsake their father, maybe because of some time anger or some other problem, they relate themselves to someone else so that is an act of kufr it is a real thing but if anyone commit that thing it will be an act of kufr so you cannot you can never attribute yourself to someone else other than your father real father and third thing is that prophet warned muslims that don't praise him like the christians did what christian did Christians raised the status of Prophet Jesus so high that now they started to think Jesus is also a God, but he was just a Prophet. So Prophet also warned Muslims here that don't praise me as the son of Maryam was praised to avoid this shirk. Only say things about Prophet which you read about him in the Hadith. So don't use your mind in your, the religion. Only say what you read in the Hadith books. No need to write any question from here. 
next student Muhammad. It was narrated from Salim, from Salim, from Ibn Umar that he said to Umar, I had the people say saying something, so I decided that I should talk to you. They are saying that you are not going to appoint a successor. He lowered his head for a while. Then he looked up and said, Allah, may he be glorified and exalted, will protect his religion. If I do not appoint a successor, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not appoint a successor either. If I do not appoint a successor, Abu Bakr appointed a successor. By Allah, once he mentioned the messenger of Allah, and Abu Bakr, and I realized that he was not going to regard anyone else as equal to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that he was not going to appoint a successor. So this is, uh, this is basically for the leaders of Islam. So it is not necessary for them to appoint a successor. So they can leave it to the committee or shura committee, which can decide who will lead the Muslims after the death of the Khalifa. Now, next to this, uh, next student, Mr. Wakar Ali. Read this one. It was narrated from Malik bin Aus that Al Haddatan said, Umar Azatan Hussain wrote to me, and he mentioned the hadith. I said to you, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, We are not to be inherited from. And what we leave behind is charity. So this hadith is very important because of this hadith, uh, some people uh, uh, criticize the Khalifa Abu Bakr. So they say that Khalifa Bakr didn't give inheritance to the daughters of Prophet and other relatives after his death. So Abu Bakr did not give them anything because of this hadith, which means that prophets don't have any inheritance. Whatever prophets leave, it is charity for common people. So the children of prophets or other relatives of prophet don't get any inheritance from the Prophet. Whatever he leaves, it is left as charity for other people. No need to write any question because now we will not have any profit in the future. So no need to write any question. Just understand it. Next question. It was narrated that Ibn al Musaib said, When Abu Bakr died, people wept for him. Umar Taala said, The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, The disease is tormented because of the weeping of the living. In the English translation, the word weeping is used, but actually it means crying with a loud voice so if tears come out of your eyes nothing wrong in it because you can't control it but if you start shouting and crying loudly then it is not allowed in Islam. we have already written question from this address in our previous classes so we will proceed to the next one Razina Ummu Ahmad It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, when the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died and some people apost apostatized, Umar bin al-Khattab said, O oh Abu Bakr, how can you fight the people when the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have been commanded to fight the people until they say la ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. And whoever says la ilaha illallah, his wealth and his life are protected. 
are protected from me and his reckoning will be with Allah. Abu Bakr said, I will most certainly fight those who separate prayer and zakah, for zakah is what is due on wealth. By Allah, if they withhold from me a small she goat that they used to give to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I will certainly fight them for withholding it. Omar said, by Allah, as soon as I saw that Allah had opened Abu Bakr's heart to the idea of fighting, I knew he was the right. So when Prophet ﷺ died, some people apostatized, which basically means that that happened that some tribes are started to say, we believe in Allah, but we will never pray Salah. Some tribes started to say that we believe in Allah Almighty, but we will not pay zakah. Some started to say we believe in Allah, but we will drink alcohol. And some started to say we believe in Allah Almighty, but uh, we will not consider adultery as a sin. So stuff like this. So basically those tribes, they were almost whole Arab was in that fitna. So they were trying to make changes to Islam. Now, Umar thought that we cannot fight against them because of this hadith. But Abu Bakr, who was Khalifa, he disagreed with this interpretation and he decided to launch holy wall against almost the whole Arab because they were trying to make changes in the Islam. Then Umar also realized that Abu Bakr is correct. We should fight against them, those who are trying to make changes in Islam. So basically this hadith is also for the rulers. And we need to wrap up for some pondus. What should be done? When anyone tries or start making changes in Islam, what should be done when anyone tries? or start making changes in Islam. The answer is the Islamic government should or must take aggressive action against that person or group. Then the answer you will write according to the Hadith 335 of Masnad Imam Ahmad, the Islamic government must take aggressive action against that person or group. Vakarari. Yeah. Repeat the question and answer. Okay. What should be done when anyone tries to start or making changes in Islam? Uh, but I have one another question. If you don't mind, I want to ask you. Yes, please. That there is one another hadith that if you... Uh, see any evil thing you must stop it with your hands or if you can't do it stop it by your words of mouth or you have to feel uh, it in your heart and that's the last stage of your iman faith yes so what is your question in so the question is over here that in this hadith, it is uh, told to us that the government will uh, applies all the things that uh, 
that only the government can stop the things by uh, they can only apply their rules no one else no that but this in, is that hadith that you have told addresses a common person okay and this hadith yeah. addresses the rulers so this is the duty of rulers to make sure that no one make any changes to islamic law in their islamic government and that thing is for those who see an evil act for example evil act mean drinking alcohol okay wearing an islamic dress and committing adultery robbing people stealing money or interest money business stuff like this that is an another thing this hadith is related to making changes in law in that hadith, no one is making any changes in the Islamic law. So people just do something their self. But here, people or group will try to make changes in Islam. So I believe right. these are different hadiths and they have different scopes. Okay. Can you repeat okay. the answer for this hadith? Yeah. Okay, tell me. Okay, uh, what should be done when anyone tries to start making changes in Islam? So the government's, uh, the government will uh, apply all the rules and start uh, aggressive. Action. They will implement. Yeah, they will uh, apply the aggressive actions against those people who are making changes in Islam. For example, let's suppose a group of people started to say that women don't need to wear a hijab in front of public in Islamic government and stuff like this. They say that make changes to this law or maybe today, let us give a real example from today's life. Real example is this in some Muslim country a group of people is trying to make LGBT legal. LGBT legal. In many Islamic countries, this is happening. A group yeah. of people is trying to make LGBT legal. According to this hadith, it is the duty of Islamic government to take strict legal action against this group. Even if they have to use force even they have to use uh, uh, like punishment of death, they can use it because Abu Bakr choose the power of sword when the people try to make changes to Islamic law. Now if a group start to uh, make it a legal thing in Islamic country, then Islamic government must crush that group with their power. If they don't do, then they will be responsible for it in their next life. So this is the common example from our lives today. Okay, even in my country, a group is trying to make LGBT legal. Now it is the duty of our government to take strict action against this group. But uh, what do we say about the government? Because normally the people in the government passes these orders, these kinds of amendments. Like if it is a member of provincial assembly or national assembly, they are putting these kinds of action and they are called the government. And other than those people, we are considering as they are civilians. Yes. So, so in this case, for example, my government, let's suppose my government make it a legal thing. Okay under the pressure of international community if my government make it a legal thing then first i will look at myself if i have the power of hand which mean i have a large following among people i can stop it using my force then i will stop it with force but i don't have this power 
I am a common person. So I will look at the second option. I will use my tongue to stop it. If the government make a restriction on speaking against it, then I will just consider it a bad thing in my heart. So at the moment, I believe in my country, I can do this thing. So I will speak against it as much as possible. I don't have the first option. So I will do the second thing. Right. Anyone else? If anybody has any question, they can ask. We will stop here and we will continue next time, inshallah. See you all next time. Ma salama. Ya jazakallah khair. Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum.